Michael Wolff's first book about Trump, Fire and Fury, was a sensation. But the sequel, it's called Siege, has kind of been met with a shrug so far. Journalists are being very cautious, very skeptical about the claims that Wolf makes in this book. It comes out on Tuesday, but journalists have some advanced copies. The biggest news item right away was an allegation that the Mueller team drafted a, an indictment of Trump on obstruction of justice charges. Mueller's spokesman came out and said the documents that, that Wolf describes in this book simply do not exist. Uh, my panel is back with me now uh, to discuss this and some other media headlines. What do we make uh, of the idea, Elena, that uh, Wolf comes out, claims that there was this draft indictment, and then the special counsel's office, which almost never confirms or denies anything, says the document isn't real. That's what they're implying. I mean, the fact that we have to wait until after the publication of a book like this to hear this, as opposed to Michael Wolf putting within his text, you know, the special counsel's office denied this to me. However, these are the reasons that you, the reader, should t still trust me. I mean, especially in a moment when Trump is and his team are on the lookout for every slip up in the press. I mean, it's just it's not only an irresponsibility to the public, but also, you know, reporters across the country who are trying to cover this White House accurately. You mean by not asking for comment, because this isn't just about the special counsel's office. The the Trump White House also says that it was not asked for comment from Wolf before the book uh, before the book comes out. Well, this idea that as a reporter you have your one source and you believe them credible enough to where you're not even going to give the other side the luxury of hearing what you're about to publish. What what strikes me as odd about Wolf is that he says because he is not institutionally bound, he doesn't work for say the Washington Post or the Atlantic mm. or the Daily Beast. He doesn't have to do that as though reporters are only calling for comment because of the dictates of the institution they work for as opposed to it just being the ethically sound thing to do. No, what if books like this get the mood music right? You know, that Trump is erratic and, and that he might be unstable. What if they get the mood music right, but they have lots of factual mistakes? Because the reviewers so far point out lots of errors in the text that undermine the entire book. Yeah, correct. The mood music is not good enough. It's got mm -hmm. the facts have to be right, too. So at the Daily Beast, we talked about this uh, late last week, about how we should treat Siege, like how we should cover it. Mm -hmm. And the sort of uh, dictate that we came up with, the guidelines that we came up with, or treat this as a series of tips and rumors from a semi-reliable narrator. Somebody who may be getting the mood music right, but on each individual uh, fact may not be accurate. So use it as a the beginning of something and then try to confirm it yourselves. Yeah, confirm or yourself. look, for, look for the denials, look for the confirmations, sure, but mm. don't treat it uh, as a uh, true statement uh, by itself. I noticed, Sarah, your newspaper, The Washington Post, in its review of the book, uh, described cringeworthy errors. Mm -hmm. So there's been a lot of attention around that. Wolf, we've not heard from. Uh, you know, it's kind of one-sided right now because the, the book comes out on Tuesday. He hasn't given any interviews yet, so we're only hearing from his critics. Is there a pro-Wolf argument here? Well, I mean, he did give one interview to The New York Times and said that he's able to sort of know that he doesn't need to go for comment because he really trusts his source. And that's just a laughable thing to say on the face of it if you're trying to be a journalist or if you're, if you're even parading around as somebody who is trying to get to the truth. Mm. Um, I mean, I think that there is sometimes a sense when you're calling for comment, um, you know you're not going to get anything, but sometimes you really hit the jackpot and you get a lot of good information. So it just, I think it's a tip sheet. I think that Michael Wolf has put out some gossip and now we can have a conversation about whether or not it's true and real reporters can actually go and try to figure out and, and credibly confirm the information, but I don't think that anyone can treat it as gospel. Yeah, confirm or debunk the information.